If you're not sure about keeping a subscription to a third-party form software, then this video is for you. I'm going to be going into detail about my top three reasons for why I think it's really important to keep a third-party form software even if you're using Airtable Forms a ton. So if that's of interest, stick around and let's get into it. Hey, my name is Gareth Pronovost. I am the owner at Gap Consulting, where we help you to organize and automate your business and life. If that's of interest and you wanna learn more about how we do that, definitely check out our website. I'm gonna include a link below. Subscribe to this channel and uh, don't miss out on our free Airtable crash course. It's gonna get you up to speed quickly and easily in Airtable. All of these links are floating all over the place, so just uh, take a look out for those if you're interested. But without further ado, let's just jump into the heart of this video and jump right into my screen here. I am looking at an Airtable database. There are two things that I wanna mention before I jump into my top three reasons for keeping an external form software. Now, first and foremost, I wanna mention that Airtable Forms, they've been doing a lot of work inside of these forms and they have been making some serious improvements in the short period of time that we've been using the software. So if you have the ability to build this in Airtable Forms, uh, then why in the world would you want to build a form somewhere else? So by default, I would say if these forms can meet your needs, then of course, by all means, use these forms. But I'm going to be talking specifically to some limitations that these forms cannot yet overcome. That being said, these forms do a lot of complex stuff. They can, pre you can pre-fill forms, you can now use conditional fields in Airtable forms. So if those are things that uh, you didn't know were possible. Definitely check out our videos on those topics. You can absolutely do them with the form software that is native to Airtable. Okay, so that's the first thing I really wanted to start off by saying. Now, the second thing is I personally use JotForm. It's the one that I'm the most comfortable with in terms of third-party form software. By no means does that mean JotForm is the best or that there are not other reasons that you might want to use other form software. I know that Formstack has a great form software, Typeform, Jotform, and this is just to name a few. There are a bunch of different form softwares out there and it feel, I feel like new ones are cropping up every day. Now the cool thing about using a form software tool is that it is specifically trying to solve the form element of, you know, of software. Airtable is a database first and foremost, and so yeah, their forms are great, but they're not as robust, of course, as a third-party tool that focuses specifically on data collection in forms. Okay, that, that's the groundwork that I wanted to lay. Let's jump into the good stuff and start with number one reason, my number one reason for using an external form software still. If for any reason you need to take payment, an external form software is going to allow you to do that in the vast majority of cases. You see in JotForm, when you're building a form, there's actually a form element here that allows you to just get right into payments right here uh, in the form itself. And you have all of this connectivity, Stripe, uh, PayPal, and then all of these other card processors, right? Braintree, Authorize.net. So basically any different way that you might be processing payments, you can gateway into that software and take payment on your form. Now to date, to date, Airtable doesn't yet allow us that functionality. And so if you're doing any kind of online ordering or anything like that, you're probably not going to get away with just using an Airtable form. You're going to need to use something like this where you have the ability to set up a form add elements to take payment then and there inside your form, just as I did with a few clicks here. As I mentioned, doing that inside of Airtable, still not yet possible. That's not to say changes don't come down the pipeline in the next couple months or couple years, but right now, that's big limitation number one. Number two reason for using an external form software is that when you build an Airtable form, it does one thing and one thing only. It creates a record in the table that you just created the form for. So anytime anybody submits data through your form, it adds it to that one table. But this is potentially a big problem for a lot of form use cases. Let's just take 
an example where somebody online, again, we can talk about orders again, since it's kind of an easy thing for us to, to wrap our minds around. Let's say you're taking down uh, an order. Somebody's putting in an order online and they're saying, ah, this is my name and this is how I want my particular item. I want to have this color and uh, you know this is the price of it and all of that stuff. Okay, putting that into an Airtable form isn't necessarily the best fit because when you create a new record, that is when the form is submitted and you create a new record inside of your table, you can only add data to one record at a time. And so you might say, well, what's the big deal? You know, if that person's in my database, it's pretty easy for me to link to the customer who just made that order, et cetera, et cetera. And that's true if they're already in your database. But if you are breaking out your sets of data as you should be, and linking them through when orders come in, you're gonna have a table for customers and it's gonna to connect to your table for orders. And so what you wanna do is basically search to see if this customer already exists in your database. If they do, cool, create an order record for them and connect that order back to the customer. That's easy peasy and that's possible with standard Airtable form, but the other part, if they don't already exist, well, now you need to create a new record inside of your customer's table and then link that new customer to your new order. But this isn't possible with the submission of one Airtable form. And this is essentially, in a nutshell, this is limitation number two. Very often, you need to create data in more than one table with one form submission. And so if you're trying to do that with an Airtable form, it's going to break every time. It's just not possible to do because again, the way that the form is set up to work is that if somebody were to use this form, it's going to, upon submission, create a new record. So just giving it a quick test here, we have new record and let's say we pick blue all the way down just to keep it simple. And the price is a thousand dollars and we submit as soon as that comes in, the only thing that's possible here is a new record in our orders table. Again, there's no way for us using an Airtable form to, to get it talking to our other table to create data there. This requires a fancy form in JotForm or some third party tool, some other form software, and you can ask all these questions on your form, then use a, a more complicated integration that parses the data and puts it in the appropriate tables based on how you want to get that going. So this is where we would leverage a tool like Zapier that allows us to automate the workflow outside of the Airtable uh, automation itself. And so the, the end result here would be to have a form that could be submitted in JotForm that collects data that's relevant and required at multiple different levels of your database and JotForm then or Zapier would parse that information out and make sure that you're plugging in data into the right tables in Airtable. All right, the number three reason for having an advanced form software is because after a form is submitted, you might want to direct your traffic a certain way on the internet, right? So depending on what kind of information you're collecting, you might want there to be condition, conditions inside of the form that say when this is submitted in a particular way, meeting certain conditions, then I want it to go a different direction. Let me give you a quick example for this. In the past, we once had an application that had some qualifying questions. When people filled out the application, if they filled it out in a way that meant that they weren't really qualified uh, to, to be working with our, uh, our team, then we directed those answers to a URL that said, hey, thanks for your submission. It's not necessarily the best fit from what we can tell. Uh, here are some other services that you might benefit from. Right. And so this did a lot in terms of helping to streamline the lead qualification and make sure that when we were getting on the phone and talking to, to folks that we were doing, you know, quality, we had, you know, high quality leads at that point that we knew were vetted. And so there are a lot of different reasons for this, but you could, if you were to take that example in a third party form software, you can absolutely build the conditions that you wish to have based on what happens after the form is submitted. So you can redirect to external links and you can also build all of these great conditions that say, hey, if certain conditions are met, then we want to go a certain direction with this form. 
Now, quick pause here. It is now possible, as I mentioned earlier, it is possible to build conditional logic inside of an Airtable form. So you can set forth a rule that says, I only want uh, this particular field to show up when conditions are met. Like if color one has been picked, then I want color three to show up. And uh, you know maybe color one is a required field. I mean, you get that kind of granularity here, absolutely. The thing you don't get though, is a lot of control over where people are going at the end. Now, you can redirect to a URL after the form is submitted, but it's not conditional based on the answers that were given in the form. And so, for example, if you wanted to have an application form where only qualified applicants got sent over to, you know, a calendar invitation to, to book a call, well, that's not something that works here in Airtable. Airtable is going to say every time the form is submitted, we're going to redirect to that URL. So the URL, while you can redirect to it from Airtable, it's not based on the conditions of the form. So as I mentioned, there are several reasons here, and this is my third reason for why I still keep a third-party form software around. Very curious to know what your thoughts are, and if you continue to use the third-party form software, definitely drop a note below and let me know your thoughts. As always, I hope you found that to be very helpful. If you did and you'd like to learn more, swing on by our website and check out all the resources we've put together. We have a free Airtable crash course that will get you up to speed quickly and easily in Airtable. And we also offer some paid services, including hourly consultations with our experts. We have some online group coaching programs and courses. And for the very advanced needs, we can build a bespoke project for you from scratch. So swing on by, and I look forward to connecting with you soon.